see. Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Cool. So my first chat today was something I came up with when Ray's like, oh shoot, we need someone to do fireside chat on Sunday evening. So uh, I thought it'd be fun to teach you guys lock picking. Um, I broke into my physics teacher's door every single day of my high school career because I was bored and she let me. And I got to just hang out, do homework and stuff in a room. Uh, I just used a credit card. But uh, I'm going to teach you a bunch of different ways to get past a bunch of different common locks and get kind of an understanding of what's going on inside of like combination locks and safes and things. Um, both so you can kind of hopefully respect a little bit the engineering that goes inside making a really good lock, uh, but also at the same time showing you how to defeat it and laugh at the edge of your face when you get through it in like six seconds. Um, so to start off with, I thought I'd go through a couple of different example locks and maybe some, some saves, uh, and then different cracking strategies, and then I went ahead and two days shipped out a demo lock so that you guys can practice lock picking. And um, I'll show you how to do that, and then you can at least understand the general practice so when you go and get locked out of your house or lock your bike to a tree sometime, you might be able to get out of it. Uh, sure. So we'll start with some different types of locks. Um, so this is a pretty cool ripoff. Can you guys not see my thing? Oh, yeah, it's not much All right. Also, did you start hanging out? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, Devin can see it because I'm sharing my screen. Um, but. But it isn't this thing. Alright. Hercules, 40 inch. What? So it's set up the stop line. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Alright. So I'm going to start with this quick video on um, how. Combination safes work, um, and combination locks. These are effectively the same thing that you find um, on a safe or somewhere else, um, but it has the added benefit of explaining the the safe. So we're going to start. For this case, safes are concrete wrapped in steel on either ends. So a good safe has um, steel to make it hard to break, concrete to absorb heat if you try to bring a torch to it, and then steel on the inside to protect your documents inside from like heat again. It's just a, kind of a sandwich. Glass. Is awesome. uh, sometimes they have glass. Um, uh, he makes a good point. Why would you add glass in a safe? For a couple different reasons. Why, yeah, sure. Lasers. What? What? <laughs> <laughs> glass, <laughs> glass, glass prevents like IR lasers from getting through. The steel mm -hmm. and the copy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay, so. Different kind of lasers. So they cover different things that classify as like glass. Sometimes they'll have fiber, fiber glass inside. This is an added like layer to prevent concrete from stretching. Uh, they also might have glass to prevent drilling safes. How would that work? Any ideas? Glass break from the lock. Pretty much, yeah. If all of your tumblers are held back by painted glass, then if it breaks, then the, the actual locks will push it inside the wall. And you have to sit at it for a while. So the idea is, if the safe's in the wall, the robber can't get to it because it's now broken, and you have to have some guy hack at it for a week to get it out. Um, but yeah. Beyond that, though, this goes through. Then the safe's inaccessible sound. How to work. For its accessible sound, we focus on the lock. If you know the combination, opening the safe is child's play. But how does the lock work? It's made up of a dial, a spindle, Three wheels, smaller wheel, and a fence. When the dial is turned, the small wheel also turns. A tooth on the small wheel turns the third wheel, which has its own tooth. That tooth turns the second wheel, which eventually moves the first wheel. The first number in the combination corresponds to the position of the first wheel when its notch is right at the top directly under the fence. There is one chance in 99 that someone will be able to randomly find that position because there are 99 possible choices. For the second number in the combination, the dial is turned in the opposite direction until the notch on the second wheel is also at the top, directly under the fence. The probability of randomly finding the first two numbers of the combination is 1 in 9,702. To enter the third number of the 
combination, the direction of the dial is again reversed until the notch of the third wheel is at the top, directly under the fence, which is finally free and clear. It drops into the notches, activating a lever which unlocks the handle. The safe now opens easily. The chances of randomly finding the one correct position for all three wheels are only 1 in 941,094. So that's pretty much uh, the idea behind the combo lock. Uh, you can see why uh, they always tell you like spin it one way to clear it all, because all of those would cam and you'd rotate the entire thing and you'd garble it up. Um, you can also see why the way it's built, sometimes if that gap is too large, you get a tolerance of like, oh, you only got to be within like maybe two numbers of the actual number. Because as long as the bar can fit in the slot, you're good. Um, so sometimes in really cheaply made blocks, you can have like a block of five, or you can go like two and a half this way, two and a half that way, and get close enough for it to work. Um, and then obviously this stuff's sandwiched down uh, pretty tight so that uh, it, it's thin enough to fit the master lock. Um, so yeah, that's generally how, how a combination lock works. Um, why is this? Well, that's really good. All right. Cool. So this is just a tumbler lock um, that I'm going to show and kind of just talk through the explanation of this. Um, tumbler locks are fun because they're what's usually inside a door. Um, this is what you classically think of like just a key uh, a key lock, pretty much. Um, the way it works is each of the little nubs on a key um, corresponds to a pin that is in a um, cylinder in this actual lock. So you think like I have this, I have this major cylinder that's where the key goes, and then I have the outer like perimeter of the lock. Um, if those, if all those pins line up, as in this example, um, you can take and you can rotate um, the lock and it'll work fine. Um, if they don't line up, then one of the key, if one of the pins is offset, it just won't let you move it. Um, so, the keys are, are just progressively getting more complex than you can take, and it's like rich and stuff, so that it's a little difficult to fit something inside of it sometimes. Um, other times, all the pins, uh, like, like refrigerator locks oftentimes are actually sort of cylindrical. Um, so you'll see like they have a, a cylinder with all those little divots in it, and that's because all the pins are vertical, and they're all different sizes. So if I put something in, and they all push the correct amount, and then there's an even face. But all of those locks that have pins in it will have some sheer plane or sheer face of that um, inside cylinder that then can rotate freely once a, a correct lock is put through. Um, this is a lock that we'll have you crack today because it's fun. Um, so those are the general types of uh, locks, and those are the most common ones to bump into. Um, there are fingerprint ones and stuff that are interesting, but we can't really crack those easily. Um, but I thought I'd go through some fun ways that people have come up with cracking these locks. Um, so this is shimming a master lock. Uh, so actually taking a... Um, yeah, don't do this, please. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to show you how to pick a lock. Well, not pick a lock, but uh, shim a lock. So I'll just talk to you. So pretty much the way a lock works I'll show you this on um, this guy too. It has a uh, it has a little like notch in it. So you know when you yeah, lift up a master right. lock, generally that, that actual U has a little notch in it. Um, that acts kind of like a normal door uh, where it's just spring loaded in there. So the idea is if I just shim a piece of metal between that little spring spring cam right and the actual shaft, I can lift it up and it's totally fine. Um, the second piece over here, he's effectively making almost like a uh, almost like a guitar pick out of just a sheet of wood we got from a can. And then he's going to take like and he's going to uh, kind of wrap it around a... Uh, so he's going to push it inside and shove it all the way down the, uh, the top of that top view. And then once it gives, it should just let him open up a lot because it'll just push away the tooth. It's a really interesting way to cheat. I actually didn't realize this until a little earlier. But this is exactly how you open doors all the time. If I just put something to the door jam, then a lot. See that? Flip it over. This guy used to have a bad design for it. That's not what we use. I think everybody would be like this. These are the same as real. There's a better than where you have it branch out, you have wings, and you can push down. Oh, you mean like the lower stuff? Yeah. That's why I have tires. So when you like, you want to carry that, push it down. Like, 
a master lock is on the burn, and you don't have to like Till this side right here. We cut the locking mechanism. And once the piece up, we got it open. That's pretty much it. Um, what Charlie mentioned is, yeah, off the cuffs, it makes it look like this. So you actually have like little rings to push down on. Um, so you just wrap that around and just push it up. It kind of looks like it's nice and simple now that I think about it. So I just play around. Um, but yeah, that's the general idea behind it. Um, cool. So every time I get out of this, I get stuck. Alright. Alright. Um, then we're going to go back to door, door lock shipping. So this is, uh, this is a harder version of the just slip a uh, card if you have like the right, experience. Right. I'm going to show you how to unlock a door using like, say, a credit card or driver's license, whatever. In this case, it's a Kroger's Plus card. <laughs> All right. Do not use this for legal purposes at all. <laughs> Just in case you get locked out the house. <laughs> you know, I don't know, maybe you got them in so You start up here. Oh, yeah? That, that plays on screen? Yeah, <laughs> Start the head of the little plate. Slide it down and press. So you pretty much just took and shimmed it. Might bend your card a little bit. But see, so that's the plate that I speak of. Don't they generally put the flat side of the lock on the outside so you can't see, do that? They actually don't. They don't? Just yeah. Yeah. My no. friend was doing this last night. And he's like, yeah. Well, because if you think about it. If oh, yeah. Because yeah. 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 then the, the wedge would be on the inside. Just push the door open. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's another way to do it. Um, a lot of locks are just like, it's almost a matter of tolerance. So if you if it's just really high tolerance, there won't be much space for you to do this. If it's chunky, then you can do that. If there's, um, even on like other locks, they're much easier to pick if they're not well machined. So oftentimes good locks are the same design exactly. 